wide receiver, kickoff, and punt returner Rick Upchurch exploded onto the scene in 1975 by torching the Chiefs on this 90-yard touchdown. He had 153 receiving yards and added a 13-yard rushing touchdown for good measure. Don Hardman's nickname was Jaws, but he was more like a battering ram at 6 foot 2, 235 pounds. He was the 15th overall draft pick in 1975 out of Texas A&M Kingsville, and he ran 18 times for 96 yards in his pro debut. He knocked defenders around like bowling pins. The Oilers' other first-round draft choice in 75 was future Hall of Fame linebacker Robert Brazil. He was the sixth overall pick. Oscar Roan was a 6-foot, 6-inch, 215-pound tight end out of SMU who was drafted in the third round. He caught six passes for 70 yards and was a huge target for quarterback Mike Phipps. <music> quarterback Steve Barkowski was the first overall draft pick in 1975, and he was the first client of sports agent legend Lee Steinberg. When he arrived in Atlanta to sign his contract, the three TV channels interrupted their programming to announce that his jet had just touched down. He had a rough day, though. In his first game as a pro, he completed only 8 of 16 passes for 81 yards, no touchdowns, and one interception. He did salvage the day by having a one-yard touchdown run, but he was sacked three times. me, the toughest aspect with breaking in as a pro quarterback was getting to know uh, the defensive strategies, getting to know what the defense was trying to do, even if it was at that time just a, a few coverages, man to man, maybe a zone one way and a zone another way. You still had to learn what they were trying to do to stop you and what your receivers would have to do in order to get open. Uh, I think it was about the... Uh, third preseason game and up to that time through say seven weeks of training camp uh, I was feeling pretty confident that I knew the man-to-man -man, difference between man-to-man -man coverage and zone coverage and weak zone coverage but we went up against the Packers uh, down in Jacksonville Florida and I threw touchdown passes my first two but they were to the cornerback of the Packers Jesse Whitman and the second one was to Willie Wood the safety man they had they had been practicing and working on a new type of man-to-man -man coverage, and they caught a, a rookie right at his weakest moment when he thought he really knew what was going on. He had no idea. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being hated, don't give way to hate. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thought your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster 
and treat those two imposters just the same. If you could make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. The most anonymous and ignored of this breed is the offensive lineman, football's ground soldier. Seldom is this shadowy domain probed by public scrutiny. Yet week after week along this narrow strip of turf called the line of scrimmage, offensive linemen determine the course of each game. To the unpracticed eye, offensive line play is a chaotic swirl of unrelated energy. But actually, each man's task is well-defined and crucial to the success or failure of any play. Proper technique can allow an offense to open up and prosper, while a misstep or a faulty execution will doom even a well-conceived game plan to failure. Positively or negatively, offensive linemen are a factor in every play. Last week, all around the league, the battles raged as usual, up and down the line. Final score is often determined by who wins these duels in the dust. An indoor stadium opened in 1975. The Superdome in New Orleans stands 27 stories at its summit. Super Bowl IX between the Vikings and Steelers was supposed to be held here, but construction was delayed when it was determined that concrete pilings were needed to support the structure in order to keep it from sinking. The Super Bowl was played instead at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans. The stadium was built at a then record amount of $163 million. And you'd expect extras, such as a super dog. And a pig in a poke. Oh yeah, there were private suites overlooking the field, referred locally as Mardi Gras. Detroit opened their own new stadium called Pontiac Metropolitan Stadium in 1975. It was later renamed Pontiac Silverdome. It was also the home of the NBA's Detroit Pistons from 1978 to 1988. Thank you.
Pontiac Stadium featured a fiberglass fabric roof held up by air pressure, which was the first architectural technique in a major athletic facility. The seating capacity was the largest in the NFL till 2000 when the Redskins' home field surpassed it. Just look at how beautiful that roof was. <laughs> program a new position mg it stands for middle guard and it's played by number 78 curly cult as the name implies cult is the middleman in the three-man rush line and he lines up opposite the center traditionally teams hide their weakest blocker at center where his major task is to help out the guards on double team blocks but with a middle guard playing on his nose, the center is now forced into a difficult one-on-one -on -one situation with a big, agile tackle like Culp. This new defensive alignment has proved so successful that Houston leads the league in defense against the run and also in quarterback sacks. With Culp and middle guard, the Oilers have won 10 of their last 13 games. And last Sunday, their defense limited the NFC's leading scorers, the Washington Redskins, to a single touchdown. The New England Patriots use the three-man front, and their middle guard is Ray Hamilton, number 71. Hamilton, like Culp, is the central figure of his defense, and is usually the first man to disrupt the passing pocket. Unlike Culp, however, Hamilton is not listed as a middle guard, but rather NT, for nose tackle. The Patriots call their defense the 3-4. Three, three down linemen surrounded by four standing linebackers with Ray Hamilton as the nose tackle. It could be pretty effective both ways, uh, the 3-4 defense. Uh, the way the Patriots use it is basically a run oriented defense because we use a, a lot of pursuit in the defense. But also last year we were one of the teams that had the most sacks, you know, against the, against the passer also. So, it can be a pretty effective both ways. <laughs> 